we've gotten so far behind because of many things that this budget can't properly address all the city's property maintenance needs or adequately restore the prior level of service that we've been giving to our citizens. What it does do is this, this budget attempts to use the city's limited resources as wisely as possible by addressing the major goals and priorities which were set at Council's March 14th work session. Specifically, priority funding is provided for restoring the city's financial stability and creditworthiness, for providing high level of police and fire protection, and addressing public health, safety, and appearance issues throughout the city. Those are done through solid waste and refuse collection, funding of the more aggressive enforcement in the city's minimum housing code, junk vehicle ordinance, and unsafe buildings ordinance, and our nuisance ordinance, which addresses overgrown grass, trees, and shrubs. And those are the priorities that were set on the 14th, March 14th meeting, the major priorities, and those are the ones that we made an attempt to fund in this budget. We know, um, we've all heard over and over again that Halifax County is a tier one economically distressed county that we have been there since they started designating counties. In February 2009, Halifax County's unemployment rate was 14.8%. Comparing that to the state's average of 11.3%, you can see the financial difficulties that we have and, and what we're up against. The, um, for February, the United States, the unemployment average was 8.5%. So the state of North Carolina has issues, and unfortunately Halifax County has even larger issues. On March 2nd of 2009, the city entered into a lease agreement and a purchase contract with l &M Hospitality for the purchase of the Rome Graphics Theater. The buyers have subsequently announced their plans for a $35 million addition to the facility. Under the terms of the agreements, the city will receive annual lease payments in excess of $1.3 million. I believe that this is a critical revenue source for the city of Roanoke Rapids, and that without these payments, we're going to have a very difficult time rebounding from our current financial crisis, and that we're going to find ourselves unable to pay the debt service payments on that $21.5 million tax incremental financing without an increase in the tax rate. <coughs> Outside the entertainment district, we're seeing very little um, interest in development of any kind, residential, commercial, or retail. Building permit values for the first three months of the calendar year 2009 were only 1.04 million, which is less than 25% of the amount collected during the same period last year. And there's a, um, there's a schedule attached that um, was given out before that goes through all these and tells the city's expenditures, the undesignated fund balance, the percentages, the building permit levels and things over the past 11 or 12 years. That's, I think, critical information for council to review when you have an opportunity. The immediate financial stability of the city of Rome Graphics greatly depends on the success of the Rome Graphics Theater. While I believe our long-term growth and development remains intertwined with that of the entire entertainment district. Since 2005, the tax base of the 123 acres in Phase 1 of the Entertainment District has grown from $292,000 to $39.4 million. I believe that that is our future, and I do believe we need to protect that. Um, I believe that City Council and all the residents need to support the Rome Practice Theater and the Entertainment District and the development that's going on out there because I believe without their successful growth and development, future city councils will have no choice but to increase our tax rate. So, an overview of some of the things that are going on within this budget. As you know, um, the cities general fund revenues are directly tied to state and local economies as well as population growth. We know that um, there's been a severe downturn in the overall economy locally and statewide, and that's going to have an effect on our revenues. 
We know that our population has not grown in many years. And that's going to have an effect on our revenues that we're going to be receiving. As a result, City Council has, has tried to um, make cuts where possible. And over the past seven years, City Council has reduced the number of full-time city employees from 165 to 138. We've outsourced services where we could, such as the uh, property tax building collection, and we've dramatically reduced spending, um, sometimes too much. City staff has uh, played an important part in balancing our budgets in that they've secured more than $21 million in outside funding to help balance these budgets. This year's budget, um, we've done using a zero-based budgeting method. Under that, funding is based on each department's minimum program needs for the upcoming year. Each department has been required to prepare a detailed request for funding justifying both personnel needs and operating expenses. These requests were then evaluated as to need, amount, and their relationship to council's goals and priorities. As a result, there are no new programs proposed in this budget. Positions are funded at the post-March 15, 2009 level, um, with no merit <coughs> increases or cost of living adjustments proposed. Only one position has been added, that's a fireman which City Council uh, asked us to add earlier in the year. So I'll go back and just say one more time, this budget is funded at the same level that we're operating under right now, um, the post-March 15, 2009 level, which means that those positions that were, were uh, reduced at that point in time have not been put back in this budget. Funds were not available to do that. Add the Lauren tax, it's the um, city's single largest revenue. It comprises about 46% of the general fund budget and will provide about $6.8 million to fund the city. <coughs> Sales tax revenues, they've continued to decline as um, the economy has declined. And we'll expect to see a decline in our sales tax revenues throughout this year and then again next year. We do, however, have a hold harmless revenue that the state created a couple of years ago that will step in and help out some. We're expecting to receive $2.3 million in sales tax next year, and of that, $252,000 of it is estimated to be received from the hold harmless revenue. 